Okay, I've got a lot to do today. I've got to put my house up for sale and pack up some boxes and get some things put away, but I thought I'm going to take a little break and do a little poetry reading. So here's a little poetry reading, and it's kind of heavy. It's a heavy poem. It's kind of matching my mood. While on the hike with my son, one of the things that I asked him, um, because he is the medic and he's in charge of making sure that the guys are healthy mentally and physically, I asked him what he would do in a situation as other Marine Corps troops have found themselves in where they're actually being prosecuted because they went crazy and started shooting civilians or they had uh, such high levels of stress. Um, I asked him what he would do in that situation, what, what action he would take to stop that kind of action from his troop of Marines. And he said um, that he knew the guys really well and he knew um, them well enough to know when their gate was off or when something was wrong with them and that he thinks he would be able to tell and he said besides mom I'm in the greatest gr group of guys ever and I know that they would never do anything like that and I just had to say you know in the stress of war where you have days and days without sleep and hunger and fatigue and the constant release of adrenaline in uh, watching constantly for your own safety and, and having that heightened sense that <clears throat> I'm sure that the boys that have done the terrible things um, that are even described in this poem by other soldiers from other countries um, that they never started out as people who would do those things and so I wanted him to be sure to be vigilant and help his troop um, be a group of good moral service oriented soldiers who are going to be there um, protecting themselves yes but but also making sure that they don't cross over the line well anyway this is a poem about soldiers who have crossed over the line and this and the uh, people who suffer at their hands and uh, by Nicholas Christopher and it's called Terminus and it's in the best poetry of 1995 and uh, I apologize in advance for the graphic descriptions and um, the harshness of this poem. Terminus. Here is a piece of required reading at the end of our century, the end of a millennium that begins with the Crusades. The transcript of an interview between a Red Cross doctor and a Muslim girl in Bosnia, 12 years old, who described her rape by men calling themselves soldiers, different men every night, one after the other, six, seven, eight of them for a week, while she was chained by the neck to a bed in her former schoolhouse, where she saw her parents and her brothers have their slow throats slit and tongues cut out, where her sister-in-law, 19 years old and nursing her baby, was also raped night after night until she dared beg for water because her milk had run dry, at which point one of the men tore the child from her arms as if he were cutting an ear of corn, the girl's words, and lopped off the child's heads with a hunting knife and tossed it into the mother's lap and then raped the girl again, slapping her face and smearing it with her nephew's blood, and then shot the mother who had begun to shriek with the head wide-eyed in her lap, shoving his gun into her mouth and firing twice. All of this recounted to the doctor in a monotone, a near whisper in a tent beside an icy river where the girl had turned up frostbitten, wearing only a soiled slip, her hair yanked out, her teeth broken. All the history you've ever read tells you this is what men do. This is only a sliver of the reflection of the beast who is a fixture of human history. And the places you've heard of as a boy that were his latest stalking grounds, Auschwitz, Dachau, Treblinka, and the names of their dead and their numberless dead whose names have vanished, each day now finds their roles swelled with kindred souls, new names, new numbers, from towns and villages that have been scorched from the map. 1993 may as well be 1943, and it should be clear now that the beast in his many guises has flags and vestments in which he wraps himself, and the elaborate titles he assumes can never be outrun. 
as that girl with the broken teeth loaded into an ambulance strapped down on a stretcher so she wouldn't claw her own face will never outrun him no matter where she goes solitary or lost in a crowd the line she follows however straight or crooked will always lead her back to that room like the chamber at the bottom of hell in the koran where the zaquim tree grows watered by scalding rains bearing fruit like devil's heads in not giving her name someone has noted at the end of the transcript that the girl herself could not or would not recall it and then describes her as a survivor which of course is from the latin meaning to live on to outlive others i would not have used that word.